Good evening. This is uh, Roger Blumenthal, Professor of Medicine at Johns Hopkins, and I'm here with my close friend and colleague, Dr. Elizabeth Ratchford. Uh, Elizabeth uh, is the director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Vascular Medicine. So I'm here uh, tonight to talk about peripheral arterial disease, which is my favorite topic, and I'm going to address medical and interventional management. So we'll start with the case. Um, this is a patient I saw when I was a, an intern at Columbia. She was a 56-year-old woman who came to me uh, in my clinic seeking a pre-op assessment for back surgery at the hospital for special surgery. She had chronic low back pain that was now radiating down her left leg. And like everyone else in the world, she has an MRI that shows disc protrusion at L5-S1. And being an intern, I, I figured if there was a uh, some orthopedic surgery attending at the hospital for special surgery who thought she needed surgery, then by all means she should have the surgery. Um, so her past medical history was significant for hypertension and mild COPD. She was on hydrochlorothiazide and albuterol, and she had been smoking for about 25 years. So being an intern, I didn't know anything about perioperative risk assessment, so I sent her to something that the third-year residents did called pre-op clinic. So in retrospect, if you look at the ACC AHA guidelines, she had two minor clinical predictors. She had an abnormal EKG with possible LVH, and she couldn't really walk. She had a low functional capacity. She carried a little stool around with her in Manhattan and would stop every block or so uh, to sit down and rest because of her leg pain and back pain. So based on these guidelines, she, sh she would be considered... Um, to have an intermediate risk surgery because it's orthopedic surgery and she should have actually gone uh, straight to the operating room because she only had two minor clinical predictors. 